back in the day. Right, but E.B. E. Dubois traveled to the USSR when he called the Soviet system the most hopeful vehicle for the world. What? Eight years later, e. E. Dubois published a book, Black Reconstruction, which offered a Marxist interpretation of the Reconstruction era. In 1950, E.B. Dubois joined the Communist cause in 1950, and he ran for the New York State Senate on the American Labor Party ticket. Eight years later, he joined Trotskyites, ex-communists, and independent radicals in proposing the creation of a united left-wing coalition to run for seats in New York state elections. In 1961, Du Bois joined the Communist Party USA and emigrated to Ghana, where he became a naturalized citizen, living in the country's socialist police state. So th that's what Harvard is proud to have as an institute? Mike, I'm not going to argue with you, but if you're going to put that guy in context, if you're not... I just did. You asked me to put it in context. I did. So now why should Harvard take a radical communist like him and name an institution for him? Mike, what was happening to African-American men when he was earning a doctorate? Well, I don't know what one thing has to do with another. Not African -Ameri not every African-American man became a uh, communist and moved to, to Ghana and, be going to, and, and, and then suddenly held up a socialist police state as a role model. Mike, I love your show. Thanks for taking my call. And, uh, you know, if you don't... Thank Look, you. let me explain. Mark, hold it. I understand what you're saying, but listen to me. We're never going to agree on everything, particularly when it comes to race. I think we're all blind to each other at a certain point. But there is a point at which we can put aside our race and try to use common sense. You and I will admit that, that Gates is a type of guy that used race to get where he is. Would you acknowledge that or not? What I would acknowledge was that he was an ass, Then you were right. He was All right, and that the cop was thin-skinned. Would you agree with that? I would acknowledge that, too. I All would, right, and, would... you, and you also should acknowledge that when Gates did uh, genealogical research on himself, he found out that he's 50% white and that the white side is related to an Irish king, so you'd have to agree with me that he is probably angry at the cop because he's a relative of the Irish cop. You know, like, I, I, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm here. Come on, can't you laugh at a joke, for God's sakes. I would say that uh, that Gates Jr. created intercommunity tension, and they should ban him from England. Anyone who starts screaming, I'll, I'll talk to your mama outside, is creating racial intercommunity tension. Look what he did in the country. For Obama to come out and say that the cops acted stupidly, Obama should be banned from England, actually, by the same criteria that I've been banned, because Obama said that the, the white cops acted stupidly in arresting this black man. That has created, not could create, that has stirred up hatred. Obama's remark has created intercommunity tension, and by definition, uh, Jackie Smith should ban Obama from England. I'll be right back. It's a crazy nation we're living in right now. It's unbelievable to me. It's like a controlled press. Amazon deletes George Orwell's books. My books are not available on Amazon. The story of a, an American media person, me, being banned in England, not covered by the vermin in the media. Now we got a president in a hot mess. You got a black policeman who was there and says that Gates acted strangely and he supports the arrest 100%. And Gates is still screaming about race, race, race. So now let's put it aside and talk about something that went on in New Jersey for a minute. And that is the rabbis and the kidneys and the money. Paul Molshine writes for the New Jersey Star Ledger. Paul, I thought, well, welcome to the Savage Nation, Paul. Paul, let's, let's go into the details here. The rabbis were laundering money through which charities, do you know? Yes, they were laundering through their own synagogues. Um, they had they're, a bunch of them, they're in a rich section of the Jersey Shore here, and they yeah. uh, pretty much went through their own, you know, they kind of used the synagogues as a money laundering operation. Well, how does it work? People don't really understand this. Let's, where the money originate from? You mean the money originates from illegal activities? No, there was no real money. What happened was a rabbi by the name of uh, Solomon uh, Webb got nailed in a uh, big federal operation in 06. Multi amazingly enough, and this could only happen in Jersey, went to the bank and deposited a $25 million bad check. Now, is that whose spot or what? <laughs> a $25 million bad check and drew $22 million out against it in 06, right? So this guy was nailed by the Fed on a n numerous multi-million dollar charge. Yeah, now, who, who deposits a $25 million check that bounces? But All right, so he becomes a witness. Now, what does he then tell the Feds? 
Um, well, the interesting thing is he becomes a witness after this has been in all the newspapers, right? And everybody knows he's been arrested. Now, these guys must be the dumbest crooks here in Jersey. we got to have the dumbest crooks. Well, what I, but, Paul, here's what I don't understand. They said the rabbis were laundering money. Where did the money come from? What money? Here's what happened. The web went to them and said, I have so-and-so. I have this much from an illegitimate business. I have this much I have to hide from a bankruptcy, and so on. And it was a sting. It was entirely a sting at that point. Oh, so it was, there was no illegitimate money to begin with, so they set the people up. It was basically uh, uh, trying to entice people through, through, uh, through greed. All right, so let's say they go to Rabbi X and they say, we need a million dollars washed through you. What does the rabbi do then? He, watched, he, he basically would take the cash and agree to, say, uh, six months down the road after maybe your bankruptcy is cleared or whatever, send you back a legitimate check for 980, right? Say 980. Oh, let's so he get, wait. They give, they give the, the they give the corrupt rabbi a million dollars? Yeah, he might give a million in cash, and then, you know, six months later, he gets back a nine. Oh, so this was a, uh, what do you call it, a, a setup by the government. Now, that leads me to the next question. Why did the government spend 10 years on this case? What's so big about it? Why is it such a big deal? I don't know where the 10 years came from, but it, it almost, I read all the complaints, and they were all in 07, 08, and early 09, when this guy, this guy was a rat, this guy was the energizer bunny of rats. When you read this complaint, this guy just went around New Jersey, stinging one person after another. Most of Oh, so he set up, he set rabbis up by, uh, through greed, basically. Yes. Um, he got a lot more politicians than rabbis. Uh, he got about. Well that's, well, that's because there are more politicians than rabbis, just statistically. Yeah, and the, the two had nothing in common except for him. He happened to uh, go into both worlds. He uh, oh. went to the rabbis. So these guys got induced through greed, and the Fed set him up through a sting, and that was the end of the story. I think some of them are probably going to get off the hook saying that they were just set up and they didn't even know that the money was uh, not not illegitimate, right? Uh, Fed uh, prosecutions very rarely fail, um, and I wouldn't expect anyone to get off, uh, having read these complaints. Why is New Jersey so corrupt, or is it just people in New Jersey are stupid and they get caught more? In other words, are other states just as corrupt, Paul? Yes, uh, but only a couple, Louisiana, Chicago, and New York. How about, how about California? Is California relatively uh, more corrupt or less corrupt, in your opinion, by what you've read? really bad. Uh, one of my best friends, who's now the leading expert in money laundering on Wall Street, used to work for the San Francisco DA. San Francisco's really bad. I mean, the funny part is they think San Francisco is real squeaky clean, but they've got a history yeah. of corruption that rivals New Jersey's. Uh, really? In California. such a clean, liberal city as San Francisco, where you can't get a plastic shopping bag, there's corruption, Paul? Oh, God, my friend could tell you stories. You know, he was, he was on San Francisco. I yeah. thought this was the cleanest city in the world where you see men riding the bicycles and the girls have uh, green hair and nipple rings and they're so concerned about global warming. How, how could there be corruption here, Paul? Well, you know, you got the same old kind of inner, old city apparatus that we have here. And East San Francisco is a very old city. And, you know, these apparatuses, they become entrenched and they just grab stuff, you know, and, and there's a lot of it going on in San Francisco, quite a bit. Well, no wonder they're so liberal. As you well know, extreme liberal policies are often related to corruption. That's so that people don't look too closely. Now, the whole attitude of liberalism is, is, is leave us alone and we'll leave you alone, and that's because they can continue to rob you blind. And putting a lot of money into the system. See, I live in a small town in Jersey, and we are so tight in my town, you couldn't possibly steal money. I mean, you've got to take your own recycling to the recycling center. Everybody knows where every nickel is. And the small towns in New Jersey, which is most of the state, are very clean. The problem is we've got these big cities where they take all of our income tax money and they put it into these big cities, Jersey City, um, Hoboken, these places are legendary. And these guys just take this money and they laugh at the rest of us. And in my job in the newspaper, I just continually say the way to cure corruption is not give them the money in the first place. Yeah, but that sounds like the federal government taxing us to death and spending it uh, in, in big cities, exactly the way you're talking about. They rob uh, from the worker and they give it to the non-worker. And then they take a, a sort of vig off the top. Paul Molshine writes for the New Jersey Star-Ledger. He's reporting on 
the corruption case in New Jersey. Paul, when is your article coming out? Well, I got one coming Sunday talking about it, and then I've got a uh, I've got a blog post up on my blog at nj.com pointing out that we have it, the, the real cause of the corruption. It's called uh, guns don't cause crime, diners cause crime. Cause there you go. Money. That's right. If they weren't in the diners, they couldn't be held up. So it's the same thing with the cop. If the cop didn't show up at Gates's house, there would have been no controversy. Thanks for the uh, call to the Savage Nation. When I come back, we'll talk about. Uh, Cop profiling by minorities. Kind has more money been made illegally than through the health care system in the United States of America. So now if you can take that on from a local level to a, to a federal level, it's unlimited dollars. It's like an oil oil well in your backyard. Ten thousand dollars for an aspirin is nothing compared to what's coming. On the issue of global warming, India, the top scientists for the environment in India. Jarem Ramesh, the Indian environment.